Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org and shamanspiritcenter.com. That's me, the little shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about the idea that suffering will be rewarded in a narcissistic relationship. This is something that many people believe, so I thought we could talk about it on the show today. Many people in relationships with narcissistic people are operating on the premise that one day it's all going to be worth it. One day they will push the right button and the walls will come down. One day they will explain the right way and the narcissist will finally understand. One day the suffering and the abuse and the misery will all be worth it. One day they will find the key that unlocks the amazing side of the narcissist permanently and it will be beautiful all the time. This is a common belief and it's very attractive, but it's not true. The only way this could happen is if the pathologically narcissistic person suddenly became an integrated human being with an intact identity and the ability to create, regulate, and sustain their own self-worth. I would like to ask anyone who believes that as sincerely and purposefully as I can, how is that supposed to happen? The problem is that people believe the narcissist behavior is caused, created, or can be fixed by them. I will heal them. I will fix them. I will change their behavior by changing mine. This is a fantasy because it's not based in reality in any way. The type of problems that narcissists have can only be fixed by them doing inner work, if these problems can even be fixed at all. Some of the problems probably can, but some of them probably can't. You cannot put Humpty Dumpty back together again. It just can't be done. For example, a very common belief is that pathologically narcissistic people's biggest problems come from not being loved or validated, especially when they were children. People believe then that the solution is they will love the narcissist back to health. In theory, this makes sense. If someone can see that another person loves them, that will heal their trust and self-worth issues, right? It might even be that this could help some people, but it's generally a painful waste of time with pathologically narcissistic persons. You see, in order to be healed by love, someone has to actually believe that they are loved. They have to understand what love is. They have to recognize it. They have to accept it. None of these things happens with a narcissist. All that happens is that the harder the person tries to prove their love, the more the narcissist denies it. It is exhausting, painful, and pointless. They couldn't believe you even if they wanted to. They're seeking love even though they don't know what it is or how to recognize it. If you were searching for something but you didn't know what it looked like, it's a pretty sure bet you're not going to find it, even if you're looking right at it. A lot of times people try to reason with the narcissist and prove things. By trying to reason with a pathologically narcissistic person or by challenging their erroneous conclusions, you're asking somebody with critically flawed perception to use that flawed perception to recognize the flaws in their perception. You might as well ask them to be a foot taller. This is not something this person can do. They cannot recognize your sacrifices in the name of love because they can't recognize love. They will turn harmless actions into vindictive, cruel ones. They will turn considerate actions into selfish ones. They will turn kind actions into manipulative ones, all by assigning motives and feelings to you that you do not have. How do you prove that's not true? You can't. It's a trap, and all that happens is you get hurt. Nothing changes for the narcissist. Not really. They didn't believe you before, they don't believe you now, and they never will believe you. Believing you would make them vulnerable to whatever horrible thing you're going to do to them once you've got them in your evil clutches. It's not going to happen. That's one of the reasons that if they do show vulnerability, you can almost guarantee that a period of abuse and devaluation is going to follow that. They have to counteract the weakness that they think they showed and make sure you know you didn't get one over on them. This is a person fighting an endless battle that is beyond what we can really understand or even imagine, and you cannot help them. It's sad, but it's the reality of the situation, and the sooner that's accepted, the less painful it is. You're not going to get what you want from this person because they don't have it to give to you. That's the bottom line. There's no way to unlock the awesome side of their personality so that it stays around all the time. That's not who they are. The evil, cruel, hysterical, raging, silent, or crazy one is not who they are either. They're essentially nobody. A person with no identity who is simply struggling to get by in a world they don't fit into or seem to understand very well. 
Many narcissists were themselves raised by narcissists and they were taught very early that people are fake, kindness is not real, love is a lie, the only way to deal with others or get your needs met is through manipulation, and the only person that matters is themselves because nobody else cares. They want love, but they're unable to recognize, understand, or reciprocate it. They want to connect, but they're either unable or unwilling to show vulnerability and sincerity. They want respect, but it only goes one way. They want others to be concerned and caring toward them, but they couldn't care less about anybody else. There is no reward, recognition, or thanks for your suffering here. There's only pointless effort that results in nothing. Save your energy for healing. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via Skype, via Messenger, and through text message. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, visit littleshaman.org to go ahead and do that. I teach workshops a few times a month, so if you're interested in seeing what I have to offer and signing up for one of those, you can do that at littleshaman.org as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org and shamanspiritcenter.com. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.